Welcome to today's webinar. We are so glad that you were able to join us. This session is being recorded and is available online at the NDA website on demand. As a reminder, we are providing these series of webinars to help you get started in revising and updating your wellness policy. Each element will refer to local school wellness policy requirements. We will share with you final requirement rules, resources, and examples of policy language for each of these elements. Two additional webinars are available after this webinar. The outline of today's webinar is to provide a summary of previous webinars, introduce the final provision for PE and PA, review best practices regarding this element, and finally, share some great resources to help schools in meeting the PE and PA requirements, including success stories of schools that are, are doing a great job of these things. Again, the USDA Food and Nutrition Services regulations were finalized on July 29, 2016, which creates a framework and guidelines for written wellness policies established by local education agencies or LEAs. The final rule requires LEAs to begin developing a revised local school wellness policy during the school year 2016-2017. LEAs must fully comply with REC requirements by June 30, 2017. New regulations require districts to include the following elements. New public involvement, nutrition guidelines, nutrition education, nutrition promotion, public notification, physical activity and education, and monitoring and evaluation. We have covered the first four wellness policy requirements. So for public involvement, we know the first element requires that LEAs allow parents, students, representatives of the food service department, teachers of physical education, school health professionals, school board members, school administrators, and the general public to participate in the development, implementation, and review of the local school wellness policy. LEAs included in the written local school wellness policy a plan for involving these diverse stakeholders. The final rule for the nutrition guidelines in which this local wellness policy includes nutrition guidelines for all foods and beverages available to students on each participating school campus under the LEA during the school day. This requirement ensures that policies include guidance about foods and beverages available for sale that is consistent with regulations for the school meal program and competitive foods for sale in schools or the smart snack school regulations. It also encourages districts to establish standards for foods made available but not sold to students during the school day, such as food that is provided during parties, celebrations, or as rewards. We will also highlight the final nutrition education rule. The final rule now requires or includes goals for nutrition education and promotion to promote student wellness. In developing these goals, education agencies must consider evidence-based strategies and techniques that link the education and the school environment. Last week, nutrition promotion was introduced. LEAs are now required to include goals for nutrition promotion to improve the nutrition environment, changing the school environment to support healthy eating. Today we will focus on the fifth element of the school wellness policy, which includes the physical education and physical activity requirements. So let's start on the physical activity portion as it's divided into two sections physical education, and physical activity. Policy language states that school districts are required to include goals for physical activities and other school-based activities to promote student wellness on, in their wellness policy. This is inclusive of standards-based physical education, a health and fitness-focused curriculum that makes sure your goals are linked to other educational components within the school environment. 
A perfect model for this requirement is a comprehensive school physical activity program, also known as the CPAP. This program consists of five components, physical education, physical activity, before and after school, family and community engagement, staff involvement, and physical activity during school. Children get the majority of their physical activity through the school. Therefore, these five components will assist the school in helping students reach the minimum national requirements of 60 minutes of physical activity per day. Physical education is a cornerstone of a comprehensive school physical activity program. If we want children and adolescents to be physically active for life, they must first attain physical literacy, which is acquiring the knowledge and skill and the confidence to be physically active for life. They learn this through physical education programs. Physical education includes hiring, a, best practices include hiring a certified PE teacher, requiring and implementing a standards based physical education curriculum with a focus on lifetime fitness and providing adequate time for students to accomplish these standards and the national recommendations are listed at the elementary level for 150 minutes per week or 30 minutes per day, 225 minutes per week for secondary students or 45 minutes per day. Providing quality instruction and utilizing appropriate practices in physical education and then providing for accountability is inclusive of conducting assessments, policies, monitoring these policies and assessments, and then revising programs and policies as needed. Lastly, not allowing waivers or exemptions or substitutions to replace physical education, such as athletics, marching band, or a host of other activities to replace physical activity can help ensure students maintain their recommended activity levels each week. Here are some sample language that districts can use in their policy regarding students in kindergarten through fifth grade that they will in ensure that they have 30 minutes of physical education per day. Many of our schools already include this in their wellness policy. Another one of our school administrators will encourage teachers to attend physical education conferences related to these topics. Funding for this is available through Title II beginning in 2017. Physical education goals can be written by integrating physical activity into the classroom and providing daily recess with a minimum of 20 minutes per day. In regard to the middle schools, our students still need to, a recess to provide for physical activity, but many of our schools are providing time before and after lunch for physical activity, which can be helpful in providing 15 to 20 minutes before going back to the classroom versus sitting at a table in the cafeteria with no activity. In addition to linking these into the school environment, we are able to promote daily recommendations for 20 minutes of physical activity into the school environment. Best practices surrounding physical activity in the school can be achieved by providing daily recess with a minimum of 20 minutes or more of physical activity. We can incorporate physical activity into the classroom such as through brain breaks or take tens or take twos, providing before school activities otherwise known as walking clubs, fitness clubs, providing after school activities using physical activity such as a reward, a community fun run or walk providing safe walking routes to schools, or through walking clubs or a walking school bus. Some sample policy language includes elementary school students will have a minimum of 20 minutes a day of supervised recess, preferably outdoors. Physical activity will not be used or withheld as a punishment. And thirdly, opportunities for physical activity will regularly be incorporated into other subject areas. Many of these have been infused into school wellness policies. There are a lot of resources for school wellness and physical activity opportunities. I'm going to highlight the ones that are most frequently available and used statewide. 
The first in regards to physical education standards are the national standards that were most recently adopted by Nebraska and now called the Nebraska Physical Education State Standards. Nebraska Physical Education State Standards were just adopted here in the state by the Nebraska State Board of Education and made these more specific to Nebraska and what our schools are able to accomplish and provide to our students. In regard to curriculum, SPARKS is an evidence-based curriculum program for grades K through 12. It provides the early curriculum as well as an after-school program many schools have adopted in their evidence-based programming as it aligns with the national program standards. CATCH is another evidence-based coordinated approach to physical education and provides a before and after school program and is a PE-based standards program where quite a few of our schools in Nebraska have adopted this as part of the after-school program. This program is an ex inclusive of nutrition and physical activity. We have currently two trainers here in Nebraska, and if you want to adopt this program, these trainers are available to assist you with this and can be a, a wealth of resource for information about the CATCH program. When we speak about resources, we would be remiss if we didn't mention resources for assessment of physical education. I have included three resources for assessment tools and you will re be receiving them as you access this PowerPoint. First is the fitness gram, which is the gold star or the gold standard of physical education fitness assessment. The Presidential Youth Fitness Assessment is now aligned with the fitness gram and can be accessed online through the PE metric section, which has also been supported through Shape of America. Some physical activity programs schools can adopt include Let's Move Active Schools. This will be a school-wide program for students and staff. Many schools already participate in Hoops for Heart and provide students and the community opportunities to be physically active while engaging in a community service project. Go Noodle is an online physical activity resource that can be used in the classroom and doesn't require any advanced planning on the part of the teacher. Teachers sign in and use, use the student mimics to see what they can do as far as getting increased physical activity. This program is extensively used throughout schools in Nebraska and has had great results. Fuel Up to Play 60 is another great nutrition and physical activity resource that can be implemented into your school building. They have resources on how to infuse physical activity interventions throughout the school day. The Midwest Dairy Council sponsors this program and also provides grant funds to help schools implement physical activity and nutrition within the school environment. There are many grants available through the Midwest Dairy Council and the Fuel to Play 60 program. Check out the website to find out more information and when the most current deadlines are. Hardington School is one of the lucky winners who applied for this grant and received $3,400 to implement wellness. Let's talk about some success stories. Hawthorne Elementary, which is part of Hastings Public Schools, have implemented a walking program before and after school as the students are waiting to enter the building and to leave the building which is supervised by teachers. Another success story is Sutherland Public Schools with their walkie-talkie program. This program utilizes older students to pair younger ones to create a mentoring program. The advantages to the students have been sharper alertness in creating a better learning environment for their students. They also received the Governor's Award for Staff Wellness. Congratulations, Sutherland Public Schools. Another innovation is at Lake Elementary and North Platte. They took different roles and decided to create a structured and a free play recess option at the same time. Teachers sign up at the beginning of the month to decide which recess option that they want to supervise. Then students sign up for their choice. The relationship between the teachers and the students greatly improves the students' enjoyment of recess 
as they see their teachers in a different capacity than they do in the classroom. Thayer Central Public Schools partnered with their pub district's public health department and con conducted what is known as a Walk Wednesday. Every Wednesday, the students are dropped off at the health department and then they all walk together to school from the health department with health department staff and or dis district department personnel as well as, as other students and then they all walk to school. Hardington created a walking school bus day and this engages students, staff, and the entire community to get out and walk to school. Hardington created a walking school bus day and this engages students and staff and the entire community in realizing that they can get out and walk to school and that it is safe. Hardington also conducted what is known as Happy Feet Zumba. Schools in North Platte have also conducted a morning dance program and students are more interested in dancing than in walking. So you can be very creative in your programs in the morning or after school by providing resources and activities that students most likely will participate in. And finally, David City Schools created a before school walking program. This compilation of resources to promote physical activity and programming are wonderful examples of the ways in which schools across the state of Nebraska are providing physical activity for our students to ensure that they're getting the required number of minutes. In closing, I would like to remind you of a quote by Maya Angelou. Your legacy is what you do every day. It's every person whose life you've touched. I just wanted to remind you you're touching many lives with the work that you do around school wellness. Thank you for all you do. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you for being on the webinar today. We appreciate you being here. Additional information can be found on the Nebraska Department of Education Nutrition Services website. To find out more about physical activity and physical education resources, contact Jelaine Hill or Zaina Rita at Nebraska Department of Education. Thank you for attending.